Hey guys, Henning Morton from Flip Normals here, and today we're doing a Bob Ross style tutorial. <laughs> no, not really. But uh, so we're doing a similar style tutorial as we did recently, which was a ZBrush gun barrel. This time we're doing it in an actual 3D software. Yeah. <laughs> with actual topology. Unlike what ZBrush is, who knows what yeah. that is. So no booleans, we're doing real topology, but we're trying to make it quick. Like it's not going to be a super complicated thing. But uh, we just tested this out before, just to see, okay, what kind of techniques could you use to make a gun barrel with good topology, ready to be UV'd? Yeah, this is how I would do it. I wouldn't do it in ZBrush. No. Because here you control it. It's basically just as fast as in ZBrush. Yeah. But here you don't have to retope it afterwards. So the first step is you have to kind of plan ahead when you're doing these things. So. The first thing we're thinking about is we obviously obviously want the rifling on the barrel. It's going to be on the inside. For that, I'm just setting the subdivision axis to 32. So I'm going to select every other face and then we're going to be extruding those. You could do anything that's divisible by two would work, except for two. That's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and if four would work, I yeah, guess. Yeah, use a high number. Than yeah, four. <laughs> yeah, you know, eight, 16, anything, the power of two kind of thing. 32 is a good number because then I don't have to select too many things. Yeah. So uh, first of all, let's just rotate this in the direction that we want. And if you hold down the J key, it sort of snaps while you're rotating. So that just makes it really easy to rotate nicely. And you don't have to go into your channel box and type in stuff. Yeah, you can change the settings for how much it snaps just under the rotation settings. So if you double click this, I think as well. Uh, where is it? See, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> the step snap. You can set this to. So now it's set to 15 degrees. You can set it to 90 degrees and then we'll rotate 90 degrees. It's a pretty handy tool. Nice little tip. So let's just delete that. Boom. And then this is going to be our barrel. I'm not going to be focusing on the back because it doesn't matter. No. It's basically you could just flip this, be symmetrical, and then you'll be fine. We're just basically showing a quick little tip to how to do something kind of interesting. Yeah. So double click your faces to select the entire object. And then we like to use marking menus. Hold on shift, right mouse button, I think. Yep. And then go Let's down go to extrude faces. It's interesting once you because I'm I'm using a pen, like a Wacom pen. So it's always interesting. Like, oh what what is it what is it mapped to? Yeah, know? is it middle mouse or is it right mouse button? <laughs> it's really hard to actually know. Okay. So now we have something like this. So obviously the important thing when it comes to a gun barrel is the rifling and how it twists. So we need uh, we need enough topology to support that. That's also why something like 32 for the subdivision axis is good because then we get a good amount of rifling. You could go lower or higher for whatever you need. So now the boring process <laughs> is selecting every other face. This is one of these tasks that you could easily script and there are definitely scripts out there for it. And when I'm, whenever I'm doing this in production, I do this actually quite a lot, then you use scripts for it. But you know, this took 10 seconds. Yeah, I have a script for it, but uh, I thought I wanted to show you the the real process of how you would see yeah, it. It's one of these. I'm not gonna <laughs> we're not gonna script something which takes you ten seconds to do. No. Like this. And then extrude again. So this is where we start to plan ahead because we want um we want the the rifling to be kind of square. So what we're gonna do is make three extrusions, one that's close to the border edge here, then we'll extrude again. You can do that by just pressing G, then it sort of repeats the last action as well. G is awesome. Such a good feature in Maya. So we'll do another one. So this is kind of the height of it. We'll do one more. Actually, we'll do four. So we'll have this here. And then we'll do one more where we offset it. So nine, zero, one or something. There we go. So it's all pretty much the same extrusion distance. That way we get a more consistent, um, smooth look once we actually subdivide it. So an important one, actually. So yeah, let's let's delete the back. I thought I did that, but uh, I think I extruded it and then undid it. There we go. So once we subdivide it, we don't have to worry about this back part. And now you can see what happens when you subdivide it. Yeah. And this is this is why we prepped the, the little the ones on the inside because now you can see they are sharp. Yeah. And if they weren't sharp, it would be a pain in the ass to actually do this because now you would have to do it for every single one. So uh, we're going to have to start to think about our supporting edges, but we're going to do that a little later. So what we want now is we want to think about the twisting. So you can do this with a twist deformer in Maya just by selecting the faces that you want to want to be twisted. 
The problem is right now, if you look at, if you look at the rifling, we kind of want this uh, bended look in here. And right now, if we were to twist this end while sort of like holding on to this end, we only have like a vector that's going to get twisted. But we want a more sort of like a round curved surface. So we're going to need more topology or more edges to support it in here. So a really quick way to do that is you can just select this, double click on the next edge, it'll select a ring, or you can hold on shift, control, right mouse button and go to edge ring utilities. So if you go to the modeling toolkit, there's this handy connect feature. And the connect feature is really cool because it can connect two edges, but it can also connect edges within edges. Um, and then you can sort of like define, okay, what's the resolution of the of the twist and how do you how do you add more segments now so middle mouse drag i think yeah uh it's uh yeah again tablet buttons are have been the same for the last 15 years i don't even think about it yeah and you can also set them in the menu as well yeah so and then you know so for these segments the higher you go the smoother it's going to be but we also want to keep in mind you know this is not subdivided yet so we want like maybe something like this just uh, hit enter and then now you've committed that to the cylinder. So if we smooth it again, you can see, okay, now we're we're a little closer to mm -hmm. something that we want. So let's try to apply the twist now. So we only want the twist to affect this part in here. We don't want to actually twist this stuff. If we just apply the twist deformer globally to this object, it would twist everything. And then the outside part would also get twisted. And then we end up with these weird vectors and just yeah. it's not good. And also because this would this most likely would not be done in isolation, it would no. probably connect to something else as well. So if you hold down control and the right mouse button, you can go to grow selection like that. And then this is the opposite of what we want selected. So you can just press uh, shift control and I that's one way to invert your selection. So this is the selection that we want now. And now we just apply a twist deformer to it. So just go up to deform, nonlinear, and twist. And if you can't see this menu, that's because you're not in the modeling mode. You might be in effects or rigging or whatever it is. Yeah, so you can change that up here. All right, so now we have our twist deformer. Go back to our attribute editor, and then we start to twist. Ooh, magic. Nice. And also, the, the deformers in Maya are they're interesting because you, you might have to actually modify the deformer itself like you might have to move it around if this was flipped 90 degrees you might actually had to do that yeah so normally it would go up here but because we selected it i think it just goes in that direction actually i'm not sure but here you can see like okay so this this is kind of the result you would get if you didn't add the additional uh, edges in here but then as we start to twist it further and further we get this super crazy barreling let me just go for infinity um, yeah, so there you go. The deformers are really cool. You should definitely experiment with them. I know a lot of people are overseeing them. I don't know that because I did that for a long <laughs> time. <laughs> so if we try to smooth that, turn on the wireframe, turn it off. There we go. Now we're getting closer. So all we need now are just some more supporting edges here on the outside. So let's undo that and go to our multi cut tool. Just shift right mouse button. And if you hold down control, you can sort of like do a whole ring in one go. So we add one to the inside, we'll add one right here on the outside, one here to support this, just to make it hard, just one more there. And now if we try to subdivide it again, there we go. Nice little barreling. And again, advantages of this is you can use this right away as an asset. If you, if you look at the topology we used in the, the last video in C version, no, you can't. <laughs> that would be for high poly use or for concept concept modeling. Yeah. So one of the disadvantages of this method versus the one in ZBrush we had is that in ZBrush, you know, it was it was live. You could keep adjusting the segments if mm -hmm. you wanted. If you want to change one of these shapes, now right now you can't really do it. You yeah. got to remodel it. But for any production sort of asset, this would this would be how you would approach it. Yeah. Like the ZBrush method with Booleans is only really good for concept thing. You would never have that as an asset. It's just this use way too high res. Yeah. So yeah, this was um, how to ZBrush Cowboy in Maya this <laughs> yeah, time, actually. Basically. How to do proper modeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since we did that, actually. So um, if you want to see more uh, quick segments like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and let us know. Make sure to turn on the notifications with the little bell button so you actually get notified when we put out videos. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.